when you think about AI workloads, we're thinking about a new type of a network that has different requirements from the traditional front-end network that used to support general purpose servers. So when we talk about accelerated servers for AI workloads, and when we talk about the AI traffic, we're talking about the need for a low latency, lossiness, scalability, and all of that puts a lot of pressure on vendors to try to meet the requirements for the AI um, networks. I've been tracking Ethernet for the front-end network for many years. And in the front-end networks that are used to support general purpose servers, we've been talking about you know, speed upgrade cycles every three, four years, and now even every four, five years. When we talk about AI backend networks to support AI workloads, we're talking about 18 to 24 months of refresh cycle. We're talking about um, GPUs uh, and or accelerators that require already 400 or 800 gig, and soon they will be requiring 1.6 T. Um, and all of that puts a lot of pressure on Ethernet to keep, it, keep up with the need uh, in bandwidth requirements. So uh, we're seeing the speed upgrade cycles in back-end networks twice as fast as in the front-end networks, which means Every two years, we have to keep up with or double the bandwidth, basically, for Ethernet, along with other requirements. Not just It's not all about bandwidth for in AI clusters. It's uh, about uh, latency, um, lossiness, congestion, congestion control, congestion avoidance. So all of those requirements are going to only um, intensify as the scale of the AI clusters is uh, growing. So uh, I don't really see this slowing down anytime soon because when we look at the uh, data growth and the number of parameters uh, that AI workloads are dealing with, we're not seeing slowdown in the growth in the number of parameters, 10x every year. As you all know, when we talk about back-end networks for AI clus uh, clusters and servers, FNBand has been the predominant technology, 80% of the market for switching uh, was done by FNBand. And I would say uh, mostly because FNBand was the only game in town two years ago when you had to make a decision when the market was in a panic mode to basically build as fast as you can. Uh, Anthony Band was probably your best bet. Um, we're seeing that changing. We're seeing that changing on the supply side and on the demand side. So on the supply side, uh, all the Ethernet players are really making good progress in and in introducing um, Ethernet products with improvement uh, to try to meet the requirements of AI workloads. Um, even NVIDIA. Uh, now is really uh, uh, has introduced Spectrum X, and they are really um, pushing Spectrum X Ethernet platform uh, to the market. On the demand side, also we're seeing few tailwinds for InfiniBand. So we're seeing the proliferation of non-NVIDIA accelerators, which have a natural affinity to Ethernet. Uh, we're also seeing. Uh, hyperscalers having an increased appetite for Ethernet, and that's really driven by the desire to um, uh, diversify their supply chain, plus the increase in the AI cluster scale. Um, and um, I'm hearing that the tendency is to think that Ethernet may scale better than InfiniBand. And so all of these tailwinds um, are really pushing um, Ethernet into um, AI uh, backend networks. I've already published two uh, reports for AI uh, networks covering the size of the scale out uh, market uh, from a switching perspective. I track uh, InfiniBand and Ethernet um, share in that report. I track uh, speed migration. Um, we are on the second uh, iteration on our version of that report, and a lot has changed within the last few months. The first iteration was published in uh, by end of 2023, and the latest one was published in July 24. And of course, there is always also the front end network. We also have market share tables there to cover the 20 billion market, uh, existing market for Ethernet, which is the front end network.